Hey everyone, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel. And today is day two of the garage organization project. So we left off where I basically just got the cabinets kind of positioned where I wanted them. Um, I spent a little bit of time out here uh, that night trying to just take some measurements and make sure I really thought that this was gonna be the best layout for me. And I think with everything I have going on, and not having to do any like extra electrical wiring or anything like that. This is probably where I'm gonna leave it. I have made a decision on actually removing the baseboard to try to make sure these get pushed all the way back. Cause I, I took a level and I don't think my walls are very level either. So I'm gonna have to do some shimming and some adjustments to get everything kind of, you know, happy. And really I think the biggest task is gonna be mounting the upper cabinets just because I've got to get those up there, get them all aligned, leveled and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these away from the wall and then I've got to make some marks on where I want to cut that baseboard. And then once I've got that cut, I can put everything right back. So this is what I'm talking about. In my case, I've got like a one by six um, baseboard. I just, when we, the builder built our house, I guess that's what they they thought the garage needed. Uh, and most houses are not going to have a silt plate that's wider than the wall. Most likely you're going to have drywall that comes down and actually covers your silt plate. So you're probably not going to have the same issue I am, which like I said, it's going to be okay because I can set the legs on the sill plate and then shim this and that'll actually lift it up pretty high, which is fine because I'm a little bit taller. So having a, a counter height that's comfortable and maybe someday I can collect some junk under there. I just need to get all these moved away and then I can go ahead and get these mounted. All right, so I got the board trimmed off here and we were actually really close to an end of a board. So I just took it all the way there. So. There's a little gap, but it'll be okay. I can patch out later if I want to. I went ahead and marked the locations for all the studs uh, from basically the top of the cabinets down to the, the bottom. And that's for the various uh, attachment locations and what have you. So I'll be able to see those once I get the cabinets pushed against the wall. And I will mention that I'm using the feet on these cabinets, but you really could just mount them directly. They have instructions to mount them directly to the wall if you wanted to raise them up. So it's actually a pretty neat cabinet system. Some of them can come with casters and you can roll them around and whatnot. Once I get them installed, I'll show you a little bit more of some of the features and what I think about them. Okay, so I've got these back uh, against the wall and I end up actually taking a piece of that uh, baseboard and cutting little pieces to kind of make these pads to lift this up uh, if you are going to do anything against concrete make sure it's either plastic or treated lumber because you know you do get moisture in your concrete if you put regular wood eventually they're just going to rot out so uh, pressure treated it's going to be fine for me really the tedious thing now is getting these all level and i did i have not worked on these at all and so i've got to get them relatively level uh, vertically in both directions and then of course the uh, this here is going to have a top on it so I need to get that level so I'm not chasing perfection here but I do want to make sure there's no gap here so that the, the the top can lay nice and flat I would like to close up as many of the gaps as I possibly can just to make it look nice and there are bolt holes inside of the cabinets to connect them to each other as well as the spots in the back to mount to the wall. So I'll probably get the big one leveled and all that and get it in position and then kind of build everything off of that one. Um, and like I said, it just really taking a wrench around and twisting the little pads at the bottom and to lift them whichever direction I need. So yeah, that's gonna take a few minutes. So I'll do that real quick and then we can get to these uh, upper cabinets. So I've got the cabinets as level as I'm going to get them, I think. Um, 
you know, there is some natural, you know, inconsistency in that tops, but so I got them, I got them nice and, and close. So I've gone around and there is a couple places where you can do um, a bolt through and connect the cabinet. So I've got those kind of all loosely uh, installed and I pulled the, the, tr the top and bottom drawers out to be able to access that because there's a similar bolt uh, up there. Um, so I've got the two smaller ones bolted together and then bolted to the big one. And so now I'm just gonna drive some of the lag screws that the cabinets came with. You can kind of see my marks there. So I'm going to, these are pretty beefy um, screws, lag screws. So I'm gonna pre-drill a hole. I'll just cinch them down relatively tight, but not enough to pull the cabinets towards the wall. And I think I'm just gonna put two in the tops of each of these because they are bearing on the, on the slab, but that would just give me a little bit of a assurance that they wouldn't get pulled over for some reason, but I don't think I'm gonna put any in the bottom. Each of the cabinets come with these installation brackets and they're actually pretty heavy duty, but the instructions specifically say that they're not meant to hold the full weight of the loaded cabinet. They're just used for installation. So basically these have a profile that matches the back of the top of the cabinets. So you can screw these to the wall and then set the cabinets up there and then permanently fasten with the big lag screws. But uh, seeing how these are really not um, going to be holding a lot of weight, I'm just going to switch over to these spack screws so I don't have to pre-drill my holes and they're shorter. So I'm going to use my level and come off the top of the locker. I'm going to probably hold these down like an eighth of an inch because once they're up there, I could lift them up a little bit as I need to to get them lined up with the screws in the side of the locker and then get them level and then drill holes and permanently attach them. I've got two studs per cabinet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, install these and then I can go ahead and hang the cabinets. And then I'll probably first get the bolts in the locker uh, started. So at least I know that they're attached there. I get everything lined up before I cinch everything down. Let me get these brackets on the wall and then we'll hang the cabinets. back for day three I took some time today and cleaned it up there's lots this is actually quite dirty um, just I'm sure from shipping and sitting around and whatever but uh, I also had to make some adjustments on some of the doors just to make sure that they would all close and actually I'm not convinced this one will um, give me trouble again in the future it I'll, I'll go into that more in a second but that is it, it's completely bolted in. All told, this was probably about a 12 hour job uh, doing it by myself. Um, assuming you have all the right tools and don't have like some issues like I had with the baseboard, uh, you could probably get it done with a buddy in eight hours. I'd recommend having a second person. I did end up having to bring my neighbor over, help me tighten some bolts because I just couldn't reach um, around the doors and I didn't want to take them off. So anyway, I don't think I ever mentioned it, but I'll put the, uh, the model number and um, up on the screen and in the description, but these are from New Age Products and it's their Pro 3 series, which they've got this and I think it's called Bold. And I think the biggest difference between the two sets is the, the thickness of the material. I think these are heavier gauge, the Pro Series, and like the doors are double walled where I think on the, the bolt, it's just a single wall door. It comes with um, the locks. It comes with, it didn't come with uh, padding in every 
uh, drawer, but all the drawers for the tool chest came with a foam pad. Um, I opted to get the bamboo top. They have an option for a stainless steel top. And I'll probably still end up getting like a quarter inch MDF or something and setting this on top of that so that stains and what have you uh, try to keep this top looking a little bit nice. But I think for the most part, I'll do clean processes and, and assemblies and things like that over here where I won't be making a huge mess. And of course I've got the big bench over there if I need to make a lot of mess or have something I need to beat on. So uh, I'll still probably be using that one quite a bit and use this one. Um, hopefully to stay more organized with my tools and I'll be able to do a lot more storage and, and move some of my uh, chemicals and fluids um, inside that cabinet just to get them out of the way. And I also wanted to mention that I believe the Pro Series is 22 inches deep uh, on these cabinets, where I think the Bold Series is 18 inches deep. Going with the Pro Series, you get thicker metal, you get deeper cabinets, you get the soft close features, and I'm sure there's some other things I'm missing. But if you want my honest opinion of these cabinets, uh, I'd probably give them like a a six out of 10 or recommend it to 60% of the people watching this video. And the reasons are two things. One, you have to have an expectation. The expectation is that garage cabinets are very expensive, really no matter where or what you get. If you go to a big box store and buy whatever pre-made cabinets that they've got, they're probably gonna be just as expensive if not more expensive than these. If you go with a super high-end cabinet, you're probably gonna be spending two to three times as much as I spent on this. So there's kind of an expectation of, you know, how much money do you wanna spend on your cabinets? With the discounts, I wanna say it was around 1500 US dollars. Might've been a little bit more. I think the shipping was free. And, you know, for that price, I would probably expect a little bit more. Um, for instance, there's a lot of inconsistencies in the, uh, the uh, powder coating. So there's places where it's darker or you, know, you can kind of see the texture there on the screen. Uh, there's a lot of fitment issues with the doors. There's some that um, have a lot of sharp edges and there's open holes from where they fabricated it. And not all of them shut completely by themselves. They're not quite square. So I found the top of these upper cabinets are actually humped up in the top. Uh, so it's really kind of hard to gauge what level actually was and I've got all these bolted together and There is a little bit of play in those connections But you know some of this gap is probably due to my walls not so much the cabinets But I did find that there were a little out of square, you know when you're tightening all the screws you're hearing a lot of powder coating popping and um, you know you do end up seeing a lot of scratches in it and Again hard to judge how they fabricate it and how they make it and the fact these are, I think these are made in China. So by the time they get made there, boxed up, sh you know, shipped over to the United States, they've, they've had a long trip. You know, for a garage setting, these are gonna be fine for me. I do like the fact that they lock. Every single one of these units comes with its own set of keys. So you get two keys for each cabinet. So I basically have 10 keys now. And I was worried that you would have to have the key that goes to that cabinet and I'd have to have five of them. But I have found that basically one key will um, lock every set of the cabinet. So I don't know if that's, you know, the keys are all keyed together as a, as a packaged unit or they all just have a universal key. So I will only just need one key to lock up. The lights are a separate item and I just got them as a gift to go with this, so I didn't um, pick these out. But I guess two things. One, obviously the color temperature is a lot different than the rest of the lights in my garage, so I've got a lot more yellow. Um, but I think for the cost, you'd be better off going with just some better quality LED lights from big box store or online. That's because it's four separate lights and you can put a jumper in between up to four of them. The kit that I got came with two different sets. So I only got two jumpers and I need a third one. So eventually I'll, I'll just order another one so I can get rid of that. But for the price, I'd probably just get whatever fluorescent or LED lights you like and just mount those instead of going with the, the ones that they offer. On the tool chest, you know, it's just big open um, drawers and they've got slats uh, that you can divide this a little bit. 
but I think I'll probably make some 3D printed tool trays depending on what I end up putting in which drawer. And same thing for my other toolbox, um, you know, for sockets and wrenches and screwdrivers. I'll probably start making some 3D printed trays to kind of keep all this stuff organized. And then on this uh, middle cabinet here, it actually has a, a slide out drawer. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to put in there. Um, it may be a good place to put like a charging station where I can put all my batteries and charging stuff and then I can run, um, uh, you know, electrical uh, extension cord or something through that. And then the upper cabinets just have uh, a single shelf, but you've got multiple adjustment points for that. Each of these cabinets, I think, are rated for a thousand pounds. So I, I think this locker is like 300 pounds per shelf, which I did just put the shelves in. You know, you can adjust them however high you want. And it does comes with, it comes with four shelves, but it'd be easy enough to get a piece of wood and maybe make as many as you need. I do got extra brackets. You would do end up with a lot of extra bits and pieces, depending on how you set this up. Uh, you know, there are some hooks and that's like a rod so that if you wanted to hang stuff inside here, uh, there's some slats for the tool drawers so that you do end up with some options and, you know, you can kind of configure this However, this is going to work best for you. For me, I just need some storage space, so I just put the shelves in. Getting them installed would probably be not that much different than installing any other cabinets, um, you know, with all the adjustments and, and all that. But, you know, it's they're very very beefy, and uh, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. So, super happy with it. At least having more space. Of course, I've got junk absolutely everywhere that I got to get organized. Now that I've already gone down this road, I'll probably you know catch some more on sale and try to expand my upper wall cabinets or maybe get another locker and move that way and they do come in multiple colors i picked this they call it platinum but it's really just white with you know the gray doors uh primarily just did that because when i'm in here filming the more like over there the more stuff i've got that's a darker color it just seems to absorb more of the light and get harder to to deal with on the camera so trying to keep it nice and bright and you know, I didn't want to go with black or something that would end up looking really dingy and dirty over time. And like that toolbox just, you know, again, just creates a big dark spot. So I think they got blue, red, different colors. You can go to their website and check it out. I think the only other thing that is a pain is you are left with a mountain of trash. So that's most of the, you know, styrofoam and plastic that came from the packaging. And then I, and you, I had two wooden pallets I had to deal with, and then you got a mountain of cardboard. So you got to be prepared for that because I know where I live, that's just too much cardboard for me to even put in any, any kind of recycling. So I'm going to have to break it down and take it over time. But, you know, this is a huge bag of trash. So that's something else to consider if you're doing this. Definitely would have been helpful to have an extra set of hands to go through the process, but it was pretty easy to do it by myself. As long, like I said, as long as you've got the right tools, it shouldn't be no, no, no big issue. It is a little bit heavy. So having some dollies or, or means to move stuff um, without killing your back is also helpful. That's going to be it for me. I think, uh, it, this was a three day process, but a lot of it was organizing stuff I already had and getting all this unboxed. So I know a lot of you here for car build videos and we'll definitely get to those probably in a video or two. I think the next thing I want to go ahead and do to, just to get it knocked out is to get my new garage flooring put down. So I'll probably make a video on that. It's really not all that exciting because it's just tiles and it's going to take me some time to get things cut around the lift posts and what have you. So that'll probably be the last video I do on garage related stuff, at least for now. And then we'll get, uh, probably get onto the Datsun because I got to get this thing on the road. Uh, it's been sitting here for way too long. So anyway, I appreciate all of you. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything you want to see on the channel, you just want to chat about car stuff or life or whatever, hit me up down in the comments, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, all those good things. And you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.